Next up is Jack Williams, new subscriber as well. Hello again, Jack. How you doing, mate? Uh, we met on Harry Humble's live stream one time, and we we got talking. We did actually. So we did actually we got a little bit of nice little chat. You were quite surprised that I actually turned up for no apparent reason. Um, I think because you've never seen me before, unfortunately. Uh, well, I will probably on the editor work of Oscar Bond did some collaborations with him. You probably haven't haven't know what they right now. Um, I think I mentioned last year I did some collaborations with, with him as well, and you were quite surprised actually. So, well, it's nice to see you, mate, and thanks for subscribing. And you sent me five questions, how lovely, mate. Cheers, mate. So, first question is What is your favourite series of Bob Builder? It has to be the very first season, mate, because I always, it's, well, first season, it's yeah, the only season I can really think of, really, because I, I remember watching it back in the day when it first came out, I was only one when Bob the Builder came out, and it's like late 90s, that was, 98. And when it came out, I do have some VHSs somewhere, wherever they are. I haven't seen them for years, really, but you know, like, like, yeah, so I need to find them out. I find them eventually, you know, if I look up here, they're all up in this attic here, along with lots of, obviously, lots and tons of stuff up there. So, believe me, it's a gold mine up there. I strained the gold mine, but I need to find them eventually. So, the very first season from last night, the very, you know, with no Morrison, if you're if you, you know, that sort of thing. That's my favourite. Uh, number two, who are your favourite characters from Monsters Inc? It has to be Mike and Sully, John Gorman, Billy Crystal, and that receptionist as well. I forgot the name of Slug. Oh, the old Slug, uh, Slug lady. I, forgot the I don't know the name of her. She's great. I love. I do like her. I'm not keen on Boo. I mean, Randall's just uh, not the best, really. I just don't. Really, I don't know. I'm not really keen on that. Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. There's a little, I think for you know, a character like her, I don't really know. Really. I think because I don't really know. I can't, I can't remember. I never really saw related to that character very much. But Mike and Sully and some reception lady. I've got a name. You'll have to comment down below very much on on that character if you can, Jack. Cheers, mate. Um, so that's your question answered. Uh, number three. Which cast film have you seen the most? Cars 1, Cars 2, or Cars 3. That's been the first one, mate. Cars 1, because I remember seeing them on a, piracy, on a piracy DVD years ago. I never saw them them as a sort of a piracy DVD back in the day. So that was my thing, what we were doing. Getting some cheap knockoff DVDs. I think it was like 3 for £10 it was back in the day. On a market stall. <laughs> my God, they don't, they don't do that anymore, don't they? They haven't. That's, that's, the, that's the years ago, that was. That's the years, my God. Wow. Back in the, now, you, now you just stream it, you can. You know, back in the back in the day, you used to get like a DVD, like being like a little in you know, like a paper packet with the poster print on it. It depends on the quality, really. And some of them, some of them actually are stellar. Some of them are a bit, yeah, recorded by a camera on on a screen, a bit much. It's like, hmm. But I used to remember getting back in the day cars. The cars I remember actually had a very good quality to it, actually. So very good. Uh, so, Carl, the very first one I saw the most because, again, on the DVD, it had been on TV a few times as well, so I probably said most of them, a few bits and pieces of that. Um, Cars 2, I've never seen Cars 2, unfortunately. I never, the whole situation thing, I've never really gone to. I never really think that was a, that was a bit, bit of a really bad move going for that first. You know, jumping on from something like a racer who's basically fallen and actually in a bit of town, actually re refines himself. Come on, then come on to like a secret agent story. No, that doesn't work. No, I don't think that really works at all. The third one does work because, again, it's all it's like all modernising and fails. You know, it's like you know, McQueen's an old dinosaur, of course. He's trying to get out his own game. But all the newcomers are coming in. You know, like all these new fast, new st you know, new races and everything else. It's you know, it's all works at those. That should have been the, the second one in a way, but I don't know. I mean, pretty odd. But I think you know, the first and the third one are actually good films. Mind you, the only the, the films I've seen very much. I mean, Cars 3 was just a, a thing, really, because my dad was testing some new streaming stuff out, and he just put it on, and we just watched it, really. And I just thought it was good. I thought it was good. Not bad, but all right, really. So, to answer that question, Cars 1 is the, is the film the film I've seen the most, unfortunately. I've never seen Cars 2, I've probably not gone, not gone near what much of that, really, unfortunately. And... Cars free. I've only seen it once. I thought it was okay. Number four. Have you ever have you ever seen *Lavender Castle* done by Jerry Anderson? No. 
I never sent you anything else. I did so. I did some. I did read about it on a website called Toonhound, which I have saved on him my phone here as a little bookmark as a favourite. So I use. I sometimes use Toonhound for some inspiration very much for like what can I find? What kind of stuff can I find in the depths of um, you know of twentieth century? And I find, and Toonhound has actually got a weird. It's like a, it's like a weird little pocket thing. That you, like a little like a little. Um, like a, like a guide to all sorts of weird stuff going there. It's like, oh, that sort of thing. It's like, and you remember seeing a picture of Lambert Castle, of course. I think it was the main captain, cool, what's he calling, captain something. I don't know, because I never really seen a thing. I never watched Lavender Castle, sorry, mate, but. Um, Jerry Anderson. I've seen a show recently done by Jerry Anderson called Dick Spanner P.I. Uh, they only did two stories that ever had Shane Room as the voice. I'll probably talk about that more a bit, a little bit more actually, later, maybe in the future. Nah. Um, but I've never seen Lavender Castle, unfortunately. But I did, I did read about him, Toonhound, that's where I knew about it from. So, but I might do eventually. I mean, it might be a good season. You might probably recommend, you might recommend me to recommend a, a, a decent show, actually. But thank you anyway. It's like done by Cosgrove, that's done by Cosgrove Hall as well, hasn't it? Isn't it? You know, all partly done by Cosgrove Hall. Maybe. Might actually. Who knows? Speaking of which, speaking of Cosgrove Hall, number five, what is your favourite Cosgrove Hall film series? I give you five. I'll give you five favourite shows by Cosgrove Hall. First things first, of course, The Wind of the Willows, instant classic, um, you know, the five seasons, include, you know, Mr. Oberstoad included, and the two feature films, you know, the interview film and Tale of Two Toads. Brilliant, that is. I mean, that is fantastic. A wonderful series. It is lovely animated. Story-wise, it's wonderful. A bit from the, from the fifth series, you can see the running of ideas and way, I mean, the writing on the wall with that series, but there's a lot, there's a reason behind it. Of course, with that, I mean, there was no projects coming through from that time. This is basically between you know, they were doing Creepy Crawlies, they, they were still doing Creepy, they finished Creepy Crawlies and they were still doing, they finished Winter the Villas from, from like 87 they did. Creepy Crawlies just came, you know, came in, Tale of Two Toes came in, matching afterwards actually. So there are no projects really coming through very much. So they had the the fifth series, which was almost Toad, and Tale of Two Toes as well. I think Tale of Two Toes was filmed after, was actually filmed after the, the fifth series, but it was broadcast early on, so. Interesting production. So, Tale of Toes is actually the, the last thing to do with Wind of the Willows. It was so, but it was filmed at the it was filmed at the series and got you know you know a big piece actually. So, with that production thing, um, yeah. So, yeah, but it's a really fantastic series. I mean, if you look for the whole thing, if you have the complete collection, you you basically get on a, a lovely odyssey going through. You start from the end of your film, then you go for the first four seasons. You do. Then you come to a Tale of Two Toes, then you come to almost a Tale of Series 5. Again, it's a lovely thing, you know, David Jason, that's my introduction to David Jason, actually. You know, getting introduced to, to his voice for it, really. Then his acting, very much. I mean, I've seen stuff with him, I've seen a lot more stuff with him in his acting later on, but that's my introduction to David Jason. Seeing, seeing him as Mr. Toad, I very iconic he is, you know that? You know, the look of Toad, very iconic. He's very, it's ingrained in my mind, and it's a favourite show for mine, for my childhood. Um, I've only got one VHS of it, and that's how my introduction really came from. Well, a VHS and an excerpt of the Chun's compilation as well. That's my sort of VHS content with Window Willows in my collection, so that's all, that's all I've got, really. Uh, but it's a lovely show, I love it. I do the music-wise, love the animation, love the direction, of course. Chris Taylor, Jackie Cockle, Francis Bowes, Barry Purvis, you know, there's... Love talented. There's a lot of people, Brian Little as well. Brian Little as well. Lovely talented people on the, on on production. I feel lovely animators. You know, um, there's a guy called Richard Haynes who's basically in the commentaries for all the episodes. He's, he's basically covering the entire show done by oh, starting off starting off the movie first, then he's done it by seasons. You know, from start from spring, summer, still in autumn right, at the moment, and then December. Then he's finished up with Tale of Two Toes, but he's also doing the uh, almost series five, almost tell videos as bonus videos, like like doing like a monthly thing. He is like he's talking about like one of them each month. Look, I mean, what he's doing there is basically you know he's just commenting on the soul, you know, the brilliance, you know, animation wise. Discuss discuss these favorite episodes of the show as well. 
is wonderful. You know, he's a lovely guy. He is Richard Haynes. You know, I would basically check his content, check his uh, channel out. Really good stuff he is. You know, he's a he's a massive fan of this show. And if you look behind him, he's got a lot of collectibles. And if there's like anything from puzzles across to VHSs, you know, plates, stills, you know, photograph stills in frames, and everything else, it's, you know, figurines, that sort of thing. It's just like this man's a mad collect. He's a mad collector, of course, but he's really he's a lovely he's a lovely guy. He's lovely. He is actually an amateur for Cross Hall as well. He, he worked from 2000, I think from 2003, no, 2002 to 2008. Then he worked, then he worked at Arnman. He worked on Shaun the Sheep. He also worked on um, The Pirates in Search of Scientists, the movie as well. There's a lovely behind the scenes um, thing with him with one of the directors. They're actually trying to make a scene. I think it's like the scene where the wake, when, pirates wake, when the pirates wake up all... You know, and the skull, and they basically bump into each other in the pajamas or something like that. They're trying to do something like that. You know, him and a director are basically just doing like a comically uh, bumbling thing. It's like a Robin Harley type thing, really, if I know what they're doing. Uh, but he's brilliant. You know, he's lovely. It's Richard Haynes, fantastic. You know, and I'm quite pleased that someone else, someone who's actually, of course, with Paul, is actually sharing the love for this brilliant TV show that we've loved. You know, it's a show from childhood. It's, I mean, it's one of my personal favourites. It is. There's many. There's there's a there's a very long list there is, which someone actually had answered that so I'll probably get to him eventually. So Cosmic uh, Wind in the Bellows is one number two. Nolly's Twilight Adventures. The first three seasons I have to think you know with Brian Little directing you've also got people like Lloyd Price, Sue Pugh, and Stuart Sutcliffe as well doing that sort of thing. I love it actually. There's a lovely stiffness quality to it. And I love that touching. Even the voice work is brilliant. You know Sue Sarah and Jimmy Hewitt. And also you got Chris and Julia Allen doing the stories as well. It's just fantastic. I say that I think that the fourth season, the um the, the look of it is quite different. Mind you, the first four seasons came from the nineties, you know, from last two to ninety four. The fourth season came out in two thousand, believe it or not. I was quite surprised about that actually. You think blimey, it would take about six years to make a fourth season. My goodness. I think because they run out of ideas and they think, what can we capitalize on there? And they probably think we'll do another do another Noise Style Adventures. We've still got Jimmy Hibbert, we've still got Sue Sarah, so Sheridan and the craze one. I just didn't like it. Design wise and animation wise, it just didn't fit well. I mean, you have the voice work, you have the original titles and the music as well. You basically have all the stand stuff. The look of it just doesn't look right. It just doesn't feel right. It doesn't even sit with me at all. I mean, I'd say it recently, maybe like a year ago. But it looked it, believe me, it doesn't look so like that. A bit off putting it does. I mean I mentioned this I mentioned this in a comment to do with the Wind and Willows episode, Happy Birthday from series five, the almost toad episode on Richard Haynes' channel. And he does actually um bring it a little bit of interesting point really. I think he'd pay, you know, you know, I just very funny, you know, Brian Lutz actually did something brilliant. You I mean Noddy Tron Noddy's trying to mention some more of his thing really. It's it's his show. It's, it's basically his type of show really. I mean he directed a good you know, a good portion of it, you know, like a very well, most of it, I could most of it actually. You know, the the three seasons and special as well. And they basically have Chris Taylor coming in for the last three, you know, for the last season, for the last 13. And it's just like, uh, you know, I mean, because it's from 2000, it's just like, uh, I don't know. Very much for that. Um, that's number two. Number three, obviously, Danger Mouse. Um, sitting on television repeats back in the day. Brilliant, that is. You know, you know Dave Jason Terry Scott, Ever Kelsey. Of course, Brian Trim as well, doing some good bit of writing Mike Hardin involved. It's it's really good, you know, it's you know, I mean if you look at it now, I mean there's a really good um video done by Paparina. He on he does a cinema called knickknacks and he does talk about Danger Mouse in good brilliant detail, of course. Um some of the Costco Hall stuff is actually sort of relegated to if you if they miss some fish, you miss you miss this this bit. He's gonna talk about a, a segment of Count Duckula, so Kind of like will be mentioned later on, I think, don't know when, but it will be in more Cosco Hall stuff will be just mentioned there. But with Danger Mouse in particular, there's a it's really insight to this in that. You know, it's a very well crafted one. I have to obviously follow up with Handman as well, which is quite surprising. So you have like two different you have two British shows that sort of uh, quite interestingly done and they come up back to back with each other, which is wow, amazing. Uh so Danger Mouse is for number three, number four, Okie Doke. Again, no one from childhood. Uh, I have listened to two episodes of it. I think that was Okie Doke and Lonely Mouse and Okie Doke in the Hiccups. Only two episodes I know that I've seen on VHS. They were on compilations, they were. So, 
Yeah, unfortunately. Um, and the fifth one. I have my Marta Benji Benji review of that one. I mean, it's from 2000, but I do remember it actually. I'm only, I think I've only got like a DVD or video of it somewhere back in the day. I think I remember from last two years ago. Back in the day in the 2000s, my God. Uh, but it's lovely actually, I mean, because you have Anton Deck um, voicing, voicing the characters, which is quite an interesting thing. I think it's the only time they actually did some, um, well, I mean, they, were, they, did, they did back in growth, they did. But also, I think it's like this one, like some, it's like a rare. TV thing they're doing, which because back at that time they were, they were doing like presenting CI TV and they're also doing their own thing. Well, still doing their own thing anyway. You know, they become bigger and bigger, they did. That's time, but people probably won't even notice that. You know, that's so it's like a very forgotten type, again, a forgotten show, but it's also forgotten in their sort of career. You know, people are still remember them from Biker Grove and also they're doing this PJ Duncan Ready to Rumble. But that show in particular, I mean, it's quite tried. I mean, it's childlike when you look back on it, but it's quite lovely in a way. You know, you know, you have, you know, Declan Donnelly being the voice of Angie Bench. You have, you have my partner as jo as Jollop. He later, but also you have um, what's his name, the keyboards from Spiral Carpets doing the theme tune. That's actually really, that's a really lovely theme. That's a really good theme tune. That is, especially I think, oh, that guy from that band from the Spiral Carpets, really, oh. Surprisingly, it's a lovely, it's a lovely feature. The animation wise is brilliant. I mean, Bridget Albury is doing a great job with it actually. Animation wise as well, it's you know, pretty good. You know, I mean, because from the two thousand, that's only one. Of the, I think that's one of the decent shows from two thousand. Actually, it is good. I mean, I look back on that sort of stuff, on the sort on that sort of stuff. I think you know, it's just like, mm. I mean, Cross of Hall have done some great stuff. They have, you know, the two thousand still kept going. They did, you know, yeah. I could probably say Bill and Ben as well, actually, so maybe. Then you mentioned Bill and Ben, them from the 2000s, they're actually really good, they are. You know. Probably say, I think that'll probably make six, really. I mean, I've only seen one episode of Bill and Ben, that's about it, really, so. But, for what I can for that episode, John Thompson actually the narration, I feel, is just pretty good, that is. But, maybe the M6 will probably do, actually, you know. Bill and Ben, Engie Menji, Wind and Billows, Danger Mouse, Okie Doke, Noise Tower Adventures. They're great, they are. Again, censor from childhood, they are. So, that's your question and answer, Jack Williams. Thank you, thanks, mate. Thanks for subscribing to the channel, and thank you for submitting your questions. Cheers, mate. Thank you.